Hi guys and welcome to a new video. In this week's video I need to replace the rear main oil crank seal on my Mark V Ford Transit van. It's got the two and a half litre naturally aspirated engine, also known as the banana engine because of the shape of the inlet manifold, but this procedure will be the same for the turbo engines as well. Replacing the rear main oil seal is supposed to be a fairly simple job, but it's getting access to it because you have to remove the gearbox. It makes it quite a difficult job. Um, but we'll see how it goes. I've never taken the gearbox off this van before, so we've got lots to learn, but hopefully you can learn from this video as well, and it'll give you an idea of what's involved with the job and whether you want to do it yourself or take it to a mechanic to get it sorted. It's very common for oil seals to fail with age. Um, the rubber of the seal becomes brittle and it doesn't seal anymore. So I've jacked up this corner of the van and I've supported it with a couple of axle stands there and a jack just in case we've also got the wheel on at the moment now you might be wondering why i've got it jacked up in just one corner and that's because i'm working on a slope not ideal i know i would love to be working on a flat hard standing but i haven't got one so you've got to work with what you've got and hopefully this way we should have enough room to get the gearbox out of the corner of the wheel arch in this corner about 400 mil With the van jacked up now and nicely supported in this corner, I'm going to remove the negative terminal from the battery so that there's no chance of the van turning over or starting while we're working on it. Here you can see the state of the gearbox, it's absolutely covered in oil. I'm going to give it a bit of a clean up first, uh, just so I can see what I'm doing and where all the bolts are. In this bottle here, I've got some heavy duty degreaser. And I'm just going to squirt that all over the gearbox and let it soak. And now I'm just using a towel to get the worst of it off. I'm going to drain the gearbox oil because that will make it lighter and uh, it means we won't spill it everywhere. So this is a drain plug for it. lovely and clean anyway it wasn't that long ago that I changed it once you've drained out most of the gearbox oil put the plug back in I'm now going to whip the starter motor out and that is three bolts one here one here it's got the earth connection on it as well and one at the bottom down there you can just about see it so I'm going to undo those three bolts and then pull the starter motor out and rest it in the engine bay here they're 13 mil bolts and I've just got this angled extension here to get better access three bolts removed and then the starter motor, I've just withdrawn it and I'm resting it over here. I'm just reference marking the prop shaft so we know how it goes back to the gearbox flange. So I've put a dent in here on this flange and this flange, you can see the line there. And I've just got some tip X as well. Just put that across there so we know how it goes back together. I've removed three of the bolts connecting the prop shaft to the transmission. I've just left one of them in there loosely. I'm just working my way back from the transmission now and I'm going to drop the prop shaft off the van. Now I'm going to remove the bolt at the front and pull it away from the van. I'm going to slide the rubber boot off, put that to one side, lift this up, slide that off, and then we can see we've got three Torx bolts in here. It's a T40 Torx bit, 
and we're going to remove the free bolts which hold the gear stick into the top of the gearbox. I've actually put the van back in neutral and now I'm going to take the gear lever out. That just keeps all the gears in line so it's in neutral. Um, I'm going to put that over there and then put something in here just to stop rubbish getting in the gearbox. Okay. To make the removal of the gearbox as easy as can be, I'm just going around and loosening off all the bolts we're going to have to remove. So that is this exhaust bracket bolt here, it's a 15mm bolt. These 13mm ones, either side of this support which goes underneath the gearbox. Uh, these two here, they're 15mm as well, I believe. Yep, they're 15mm. I'm going to loosen them off and then I'm going to go down there and start loosening off all of the bolts around the bell valves in. There are two electrical connectors to remove from the gearbox and they're both on the left hand side. One's up here and this is the reversing switch so we can unplug that carefully like that and the other one is over here and this is the speedo connection so let's pop that out carefully I'm going to tuck the wiring loom for the gearbox up by the starter motor, put it out of the way so we don't crush it or pinch it. To disconnect the clutch cable from the fork, get some pliers and pull the cable back and then it comes out of there like that and now from the other side you can withdraw the clutch cable the next job will be to remove the gearbox but it's a bit of a lump probably about 50 kilograms i think i've actually ordered a transmission jack to help with this and that should be here tomorrow so in the meantime i'm going to take the prop shaft off completely and give that some love same again i'm just going to reference mark the flange where the prop shaft bolts onto the diff. So I'm just gonna get this sharp chisel tool here and a hammer. And also some tip -X, or if you've got a paint pen, even better. Hey, check out the cat. His name must be tip -X, or maybe he just likes the smell of it. Yeah, and you might need a breaker bar. It wasn't that long ago that I had the prop shaft off anyway, so shouldn't be too tight. He says, oh. there we go, that's one, oh, two, oh. three, make sure it's on there nicely, and four. Might need a little tap with a hammer. There we go. dried up now. I'm going to finish it off with a nice top coat of this.
I've invested in this transmission jack, which goes directly underneath it, and we should be able to use that to lower it down safely. So I've got my transmission jack in a position now, supporting the bottom of the gearbox, and I put this strap around it, and it's got a ratchet on the other side. I've just jacked it up a small amount, so it's now supporting the gearbox. I've loosened these bolts off and you can see the gearbox is not resting on this. It's resting on our transmission jack now. With this off, it's also the perfect opportunity to give it a good old clean and check this gearbox mount. It's actually all right on this one. From the front of the van, there are two eight mil bolts, which go through here and into the gearbox. One there, and there's one this side, just next to where the clutch cable goes through. So we need to remove them first. I'm now gonna get my trolley jack with a block of wood underneath it, just to spread the load across the oil sump. And I'm just going to support the engine like that. Now we've got the engine supported at the front there, I can remove all of the transmission bolts. Just look at the quality of these bolts made back in a time when things were built to last and this is the last bolt to come out here you can see I've just made a little diagram so we know where all the bolts go I think the majority of them are the same length it's just these four bottom ones have got a shoulder on the bolt every time I take some bolts off the van I'm just labeling them up so I don't get them confused once you wiggle the gearbox a little bit this plate will fall off so let's just take this out. It's a good idea to have an assistant help you remove the gearbox from the engine, especially if you're working on a slope. Again, it's not recommended and not ideal. To give you better access for removing the gearbox, you could remove the exhaust downpipe. I didn't want to on this occasion because the bolts are very rusty and I didn't want to make more work for myself. There was just enough clearance in this corner to remove the gearbox without having to take the wheel off or cut a hole in the side of the van. That's our gearbox out. As you can see, it's absolutely covered in oil. This transmission jack was brilliant. It works really, really well for taking the weight off and um, I'm glad I bought that actually. That's gonna come in handy in the future projects. I think the next job is to clean this up and make it look pretty again. I've just taped up the top of the gearbox here so no water gets in there and the reversing switch and the speed sensor connector here. To remove the clutch fork we just pull it away from this pivot point like that and then slide the release bearing up and off. get the gearbox and put it on a couple of blocks of wood and tilt it up this way 
and that's just so that it's not resting on the shaft. as heavy as a four but it's still pretty heavy give the clutch housing and clutch a good spray down with water before removing it and that should prevent any of the clutch dust becoming airborne also wear a dust mask for this job some of the earlier clutches were made from asbestos material so you really don't want to be breathing that in here I'm just removing the bolts which secure the pressure plate onto the flywheel Because the flywheel bolts are really tight, we need to lock the flywheel to the engine. So luckily there's this hole here, which is for locking the engine at Todd dead center. And that goes all the way through. Into there. So once we got it at that point, we can lock the flywheel. I've just got a 10 mil drill bit you can use 11 or 12 is a little bit tight for this. And then once we've got it in there, our flywheel is locked and we should, with some Uga Dugas, be able to carefully loosen off the flywheel bolts. Make sure you get it nicely seated on there and then just break them off one by one. I'm gonna loosen the top one take it out about halfway. I'm going to take this locking pin out. Be careful because it's heavy. Okay, it's heavier than it looks. So I'm actually going to do this off camera. that work just to change this seal this is the rear main crank seal and as you can see it's leaking pretty bad there's oil absolutely everywhere where the oil has been picked up off the back of the flywheel and it's just sprayed out here first job then is to give it a good clean up um, and then I'm going to be replacing the rear main seal the spigot bearing or the pilot bearing here this one's actually seized which is a bit of a shame because it's actually damaged the gearbox shaft slightly I'll show you that in a bit this plate comes off, it's sitting on a couple of dowels there and there. So we'll take this off and give that a clean. And I'm going to spray the back of the engine with some brake cleaner and just get rid of all this oil residue. Red, some grease, and I'm just going to put that inside here. A little bit of bread, a little bit of grease, a little bit of bread. This is the messy part, that's why I'm doing it first. A little bit of grease. And what we're doing here is trying to build up hydraulic pressure behind the bearing to push it out. So a little bit of grease, a little bit of bread. Just keep stuffing it in there until it fills the hole up. That's a little bit too big. I've got to go find something a little bit smaller than that. I can't find anything that fits in there perfectly, so I'm just 
put in some insulation tape on the end of this drill bit here to bring it out to the right size. And now, hopefully, with a little bit more red and grease, should pop out just like that now we just need to remove all this bread and grease from here and give it a little clean out if we have a look at our gearbox input shaft you'll see this wear mark here and that's where the old pilot bearing had failed you'll see here it's absolutely full of dirt and rust and it's seized on the inner race doesn't rotate like a bearing should. If we look at our new bearing, you'll see it rotates nicely. And because we've got this groove in the shaft, our new bearing is a little bit loose on there. And to get around that, I'm not gonna install the pilot bearing in the engine as far, so that it sits on the undamaged piece of shaft at the back. This is our new pilot bearing. It's a 6202 2RS. I'm not too sure what the C and H are for and it's made by FAG, it's a good quality bearing. Uh, SKF also make good bearings. For this, make sure you pay a little bit more and get a good quality bearing. For installing this, we need to find a socket which fits on the outer race. So here I've got a 27 mil socket and we're gonna use that to install the new bearing. You might have to give it a little bit of a clean up if it's really rusty, but this isn't bad. So let's get our new bearing and our socket on the outside race and just gently tap it in if your gearbox input shaft is undamaged you can carry on hammering this bearing in until it bottoms out but in my case i'm going to leave it out a little bit so that it sits on the undamaged piece of shaft We're also going to be replacing the oil sump gasket and putting some new oil in it. So let's drain the engine oil. It's due a service anyway. I also replaced the oil filter. That way we can get all of the oil out of the engine. It's worthwhile replacing the oil filter every time you do an oil change. Here's the new one, put a small amount of oil around the rubber seal to stop it binding up when you install it. So we're going to replace the sump gasket um, as it's much easier to get to the bolts at the back while we've got the gearbox out. There's quite a few bolts so this might take me a while. That's all of the bolts removed around the oil sump, so it should come off now. Lovely. Let's remove the old sump gasket. Using a scraper, I'm just going around the edge of this sump where the new gasket will sit, and I'm just removing any of the old rubber so that it's nice and flat. Obviously be really careful not to put any sharp scratches across it because that will cause a leak. I've also lifted these tabs up so I can take this piece out just to clean underneath here. There's a few small spots of rust here and there on the bottom of the sump, so I'm just going to rub them off with a wire wheel, treat them, and then I'm going to paint all this once I've completely degreased it. I've removed as much of the rust as possible using a wire wheel on a drill. I'm now just going to wipe it off. And let's get some of our rust converter.
and this new sump plug's got a rubber washer on it so just put a little drop of oil on there and that's so it doesn't bind up when you install it. I'm going to remove the rear main seal carrier now. It's just four bolts on this engine and then we can pull the rear main crank seal carrier off. Just get behind the old gasket, carefully prise it off. I was a little bit concerned that this gasket was asbestos because it looks like asbestos material, but it does say on it, non-asbestos. So we are safe. To clean this off and prepare it for the new seal, I'm just gonna use a bit of brake cleaner and the abrasive side of a sponge to clean this off. It's less aggressive than the scraper. And we've got less chance of gouging the steel and causing a leak and also round the outside of the crankshaft. Make sure it's thoroughly clean and the back of the engine is nice and smooth where the new gasket's gonna sit. So to remove the old seal, grab yourself a couple of blocks of wood and put the seal carrier onto the blocks of wood and then get a drift or a punch and then we want to punch the seal out from the back of the carrier. And on this surface where the seal sits, give that a good clean as well. I was unable to find a new gasket for the oil seal carrier, so we need to make our own one. And for that, I've got some oil resistant gasket paper. I'll put a link in the description to some of this paper if you need to make a gasket yourself. So all we do is get the seal carrier, let's put it on the gasket paper and draw around it. Now I'm gonna get some scissors and cut the gasket out. Now with some greaseproof paper and a pencil, we can see where the old gasket used to go. So just go around the four bolt holes roughly as a reference marking and then draw around the edge of where the gasket used to go, roughly about there, around there. It used to go up there and around there. Now flip it over, put your bolt holes where they need to be. and then draw around it to push the lead onto the gasket. There we go. And finally, you've just got to cut out where the bolts go through. And that is how you quickly make a new gasket. So here's where the fun and games begin, installing the rear main seal onto the crankshaft. You've got two options. The Haynes manual recommends that you install the seal into the carrier and then install the carrier onto the van. Now I tried that, but the problem I was having was the rear main seal, when you were trying to push it onto the crankshaft, kept popping out the back like that. Don't worry, I'm not using that seal. The other option, which I'm gonna go with now, is installing the carrier onto the van first, and then installing the rear main crank seal afterwards, and then you can tap it in to the housing. So here I have two rear main oil seals. One's made by FAI, and this one's made by L-Ring. 
I was originally going to use this FAI seal, but when I went to install it, I think I may have damaged it. Um, and this plastic insert piece is really thick, so it's hard to push onto the crankshaft. So after speaking to somebody on Facebook, they suggested that maybe I go for a better quality seal. So I got this L-ring one, made in Germany. Comes with a nice application piece here. It's much thinner than this one. So hopefully it should be easier to install it onto the crankshaft. They're both PTFE line seals, so you don't use any lubricant for installing them. They're installed dry, and then you have to wait four hours for them to mold to the shape of the crankshaft before you start the engine. On paper gaskets like this, I like to use a little bit of Hylamar blue. This is just a gasket sealing and jointing compound. This stuff was developed by Rolls-Royce for sealing gaskets on their turbine engines. So if it's good enough for that, I'm sure it's good enough for my old transit. It's good stuff this. So just get a thin smear all over this paper gasket. Flip it over, put it in position. Another good thing about this is that it sticks your gasket exactly where you want it before you install it on the engine. Just get a bit of solvent to clean off the metal plate. We can now go and install that on the engine. Position that on the back of the engine and then I'm just gonna wind the bolts in. And I'm not gonna tighten these up yet. Now we can get our new oil seal, put that over the crankshaft and we should be able to tap the new seal in the carrier now you don't want to damage a new seal so if you use the old one you can put that over the top and hit on that one and that way you won't damage a new seal It's almost in. Needs a bit more. Until it feels like the seal's bottomed out. And then pull out the old seal. And that's it. That's the new seal installed. And now we can tighten these up to the right torque specification. Before torquing them up, you might just want to level off the engine block with the seal carrier at the bottom as there is a little bit of movement there and you want it as flush as possible so that the oil sump gasket seals up against this carrier. So just try and get it flush with the block as best you can. It's a little bit corroded here where the gasket sits so I'm just going to scrape this so it's nice and flat. Clean off the area around the bottom of the engine where the sump gasket sits, make sure it's nice and smooth. Before installing the new oil sump gasket, there are four areas which you need to apply a gasket sealant or an RTV. Here and here, where the front plate of the engine bolts to the engine block. So just get some Hylamar or similar and put some of that there. Here. Because this edge isn't quite flush with this one, you're just bridging the gap so that it's a nice smooth surface for the new gasket. Here, where the seal carrier bolts to the back of the engine. And across here. And it should feel flush with your finger. Before installing your 
sump with a gasket. Just give this oil pick up a quick spray off. There's two different types of sump gasket you can get. This is a cork type and this is the rubber type I'm going to be using. I prefer the rubber types because with the cork ones you can quite easily over tighten it um, and split the gasket. So I'm going for a rubber one. It's got these tabs on it here. Place it over the corners of the sump. Just going to reapply a little drop of red locker on there. I'm just tightening all the bolts up most of the way. There we go. I'm going to go do the opposite corner. I work my way around the gasket, torquing it up to specification and I do opposite so that it's tightened down evenly um, and that way it should seal nicely against the engine. The flywheel is in pretty good condition anyway and the surface feels really smooth so I'm just going to give it a quick flick over with some wet and dry. I've got some 600 grit wet and dry here just on this surface so I put some water on there and I want to keep it flat so let's get a block that's lovely and smooth obviously if you've got the funds and you know somebody that can machine it up for you take it to get it skimmed but in this case I think this is going to work just fine just put some RTV around this cover here just in case I'm gonna again just get some RTV and seal around the edge it can't hurt to put a little bit around here I made a very silly mistake and installed the flywheel before the backing plate. Now don't forget to install the backing plate first if you can learn anything from this video. The flywheel bolts have a two stage tightening sequence. Stage one is 18 to 23 newton meters and stage two is 25 to 30 degrees. The fact that it's got a torque angle specification implies that they're stretch bolts so they should only be used once but for this application I'm sure they'll be fine for another go. I'll leave that down to you, whether you want to buy some new bolts. To prepare these bolts ready to go on the van, I'm just putting a small amount of grease around the shoulder of the bolt, being very careful not to get any on the threads. And that's just so that we get an accurate uh, torque reading when we come to torque them up. So just put a small amount here so that you reduce the friction when you torque them up. And then I'm gonna get my medium strength thread locker We don't want these coming loose when we're driving, that's for sure. Let's put our drill bit back through to lock the flywheel against the engine. And now we can torque these up in a crisscross pattern. So to torque these down to the right angle specification, 25 to 30 degrees. I'm just going to put a line on the bolt and a line on the flywheel. Just let that dry for a minute. And then we can just whiz these around 25 to 30 degrees. So I did that one, that one, that one, that one. Now I'm onto this one here. Here we have our new clutch and pressure plate. The first thing you want to do is just clean off this surface of the pressure plate with a bit of brake cleaner to remove any grease on there. It comes with a grease on it to stop it going rusty. 
and then we want to align the clutch and pressure plate ready to go on the van and for that i've got this clutch alignment tool and i'll show you how to use that the clutch itself has a raised side and a flat side the raised side goes inside the pressure plate that way some clutches have it written on which side's the transmission side and which side is the flywheel side the clutch alignment tool comes with three plastic inserts so you want to use the one which is best suited to your clutch and in my case it's this one because it fits in there nicely and when this pin goes in the end it will open up and grip on to the clutch like that so let's use that one we put that in there this pin goes through and then this back nut goes on the top. Let's get our clutch and pressure plate, flip it over. Eyeball it down the center and get it roughly aligned. And then you wanna get your alignment tool, wind this back, put this piece inside the clutch and then screw the back nut down and that will open up the plastic insert so that it grips onto the clutch. And then we can wind this one down and because it's tapered, it will centralize the pressure plate with the clutch. So let's screw that on there. If we turn it up the other way, we can see that that's nicely aligned now, ready to be installed on the van. Let's remove this locking pin just so we don't damage the clutch when we're installing it. Make sure the flywheel is lovely and clean. I've already wiped it down with a bit of brake cleaner. Now we can get our new clutch and position it on the dowel here. That looks right to me. Now I'm going to install the six pressure plate bolts and I'm going to torque the pressure plate to the flywheel at 30 newton meters. Can now remove our clutch alignment tool just unscrew this back nut i've just made a rookie mistake this plate was supposed to go on first very silly of me don't forget the backing plate it's much easier to get it right first time there we go learn from my mistake we've got it all installed flywheels torqued up to the right specification pressure plates all torqued up now we can remove our clutch alignment tool and it's all ready to take our gearbox this is our clutch fork and this is what pivots against the bell housing to engage and disengage the clutch. Because the cable pulls on this end, this is a notorious weak point here on this clutch fork. So what I'm going to do is reinforce this area by welding a plate on here. If you don't have a welding machine, it might be worth replacing the clutch fork with a new one anyway. I always feel prevention is better than cure. Just make sure you go for a good quality clutch fork. It's a little bit crude looking, but it's much stronger, and that's all that matters. I've just given it a little grind up. Here I've got a new clutch release bearing or a throw out bearing. This came in the three piece clutch kit, and I've got some copper grease. I'm just going to put that on the sliding points of the release bearing. And then this goes into the clutch fork at the top, it's just got two clips. So push that in there, turn the clutch fork over and we want to put a bit of copper grease in here. And we're using copper grease because it's got a high melting point. So just smear a little bit on this pin and then we can install this onto the gearbox. And before installing the clutch fork onto the gearbox, you want to put a bit of copper grease on this shaft here and on the splines and also this pivot point. Just put a little bit on there as well. You don't want too much because it might fling off onto your new clutch. So just put a smear on there, put the clutch cork through there, guide 
your release bearing onto the shaft and then push the clutch fork onto the pivot point like that and also put a little bit of copper grease on this face here where it makes contact with the pressure plate spring. That's our gearbox almost home. I'm gonna go start putting my bolts in now. That's all the bell housing bolts back in. I can now torque them down in a crisscross pattern to 35 Newton meters. A little tip for getting better access to that one right at the top there. You can lower the gearbox down slightly at the back here. Just to give you a brief summary of everything we have to reinstall, I start with the gearbox cross member. And we torque this gearbox cross member up to 50 newton meters. And these two nuts here are also 50 newton meters. We can get the transmission jack out of the way now, we don't need that anymore. Tighten up the exhaust bracket. We can then reinstall the starter motor. Make sure you don't forget to connect the earth cable. Reconnect your electrical connectors, one to the reversing switch and one to the speed sensor. You can then install the clutch cable. Just put it through the bell housing and then using some pliers, pull the cable and insert it into the fork. There's only a few parts left. We can reinstall the prop shaft starting at the differential end because we still need to line up the prop shaft with the gearbox flange as we've had the gearbox off it won't be in line anymore. I fill the gearbox up from the top. First of all I just flush it through to make sure there's no water or dirt inside the gearbox. As you can see here it's nice and clean. I refit the drain plug and then fill it up with 1.25 litres of MT75 gearbox oil. You see in here all of the gears need to be aligned and the one on the right is too far back so I just need to get something in there to push it forward. It was just a case of sort of putting the gear stick in um, and trying to get the selectors all lined up but that's in neutral now. So we can put our three Torx bolts back in. I couldn't find a Torx specification in the Haynes manual for these three Torx bolts so I'm just nipping them up. Perfect. If you haven't already extended the gear stick, it makes a big difference to the driving position and made a separate video about that if you want to check it out. So to line this prop shaft flange up with the gearbox flange, I'm just going to go and turn the engine over by hand, put it in gear, turn it over by hand and then we can position it in line with our reference mark on there. I also managed to source one of these rubber covers. Look at that. I filled the engine up with 6.15 litres of 10W40 semi-synthetic engine oil. 
I drop the van off the axle stand and reconnect the battery. Give it a start up. Right, I found it wasn't quite going into gear. It was kind of just making a grunchy noise. But now it's going in gear. It's a little bit tricky still to get it in gear. I want it to be smoother than that. So I'm just going to tighten the clutch cable a little bit. And for that, you just need a 10mm spanner. You go to the clutch pedal and you can see I've already tightened it up quite a bit. It's got a new clutch in there, so. Just tighten that up a little bit. All that's left for me to do is take it for a little test drive and make sure all the gears are nice and smooth. We want to wear the clutch in gently. Obviously don't take it racing or off-roading. Second. go thank you for watching this video i hope you've enjoyed watching it and you found value in this content if you did please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already subscribed i'd really appreciate it and it's completely free to subscribe if you click the little alarm bell you'll get notifications when i post new videos and hopefully i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching